and welcome back to The Realist Minimalist. I'm Emily and I'm a minimalist, but I'm also a realist. Today I'm going to be talking about 10 ways that you can stop shopping or just be more minimal with your shopping habits. Oh, by the way, I have a list down here. So if you see me looking down here, then this is where all my notes are, just for info. So number one on the list is to unsubscribe from marketing emails. So you might get an email from ASOS or Urban Outfitters or New Look and it says, we've got a sale on 25% off everything. And our natural reaction is to click through and see what there is on the shop. If you're not getting those emails, then you're not getting the update that there's a sale or um, there's an offer on something. You're not seeing the constant stream of new trends that are coming through. And so it kind of slips out of your mind that the shop exists as much. So it's a great way to stop you from shopping online, especially. So unsubscribe from those emails. Number two follows a similar trend to this, unfollow. So unfollow those people on Instagram that inspire you to buy things. This might be Mrs. Hinch, as much as I love her, she got everyone to buy every single cleaning product under the sun. Um, this might be uh, for your old school YouTubers, it might be Zoella, she's always posting about different products and things. You might not notice that you're doing it, but subconsciously you're taking in all of these advertisements and you are more likely to buy things. So if you notice that an influencer is often doing lots of ads, then it might be a good idea to unfollow them or just mute them so you don't see them in your constant stream of feed. Within that, I would also suggest that you follow people who can inspire you to shop less. So you could, in, you could follow minimalist accounts, you could follow frugal accounts because often those two go hand in hand and I would definitely recommend following the minimalists, following me at The Realist Minimalist if you like. I won't be selling you anything over there anytime soon. So yeah, just think about all the information that you're taking in electronically um, when you're scrolling through Instagram and uh, adjust who you're following for how much you want to buy. Number three is set yourself a fun budget. Now, budget and fun don't tend to go hand in hand normally. If you're feeling guilty about shopping, give yourself a certain set amount of money to do something fun with, whether it's shopping or going to the cinema or um, having dinners out with a friend or adventure days or anything like that. Set yourself a budget that encompasses all of that. And then when you look at that budget to think, oh, I really want to buy this uh, pair of shoes. Oh, but that uses up all the budget and that means I can't go out with my friend next week. And it kind of makes you weigh up the options, whether this pair of shoes is worth not being able to see your friends or um, have a good time elsewhere. And quite often you'll end up popping the shoes back and doing something more exciting with the money. I always think that money is a tool and you want to use it to get the most out of life. And often that pair of shoes is not going to give you more fun, more enjoyment, more inspiration than spending time with your family, your friends, doing exciting things, traveling. So it's a great way to set yourself a budget and you can use it on the shoes if you like, that's absolutely fine. But once you've spent the budget, it's all gone. And I think that's a really good way to kind of train yourself into thinking of money in a different way and thinking of um, non-essential items in a different way as well. Number four follows on from that. It is shop your wardrobe. So many of us have tons of clothes that we do not wear on a regular basis. You can check out my wardrobe declutters within my videos. I'll pop a card somewhere, somewhere around here, maybe here, maybe here, who knows. And I, even as a minimalist, have lots more clothes than I need. 
I'm not the strictest minimalist. I still have clothes that I don't wear every day. I don't use the um, the three month rule where if it's not been used, then it gets chucked out. But I have a, a smaller closet, but I still have things that I don't wear all the time and I forget that I have them or they're at the bottom of a drawer and I don't think about them and I don't see them. So when you're having your next declutter or just do it on its own, just go through your clothes one by one and see what there is. See if you can make a different outfit with different items that you've not put together before and that can change up an item completely and then something that you thought you needed from a shop, you realise suddenly that you can create this outfit without that extra thing that costs you 50 quid or 100 pounds or whatever. So definitely shop your wardrobe and you can actually make it a really fun activity as well. Number five is make a list. Now this might seem like, oh yeah, make a list of things that you want. No, make a list of the things you see in the shops that you want to buy there and then. Things that you would get your debit card out and swipe it at the till straight away. Don't buy it then, write it on your phone or get the link from a website and put it onto your phone, it, just in your notes app, it's really easy. Write it down, think about it for 24 hours, think about it for a week, depending on how um, good your willpower is. And once you've thought about it for those 24 hours or those three days or a week or a month, if you're really good with your willpower, and you still think you need it, then buy it. Don't buy things on a whim. And that is the easiest way to save money when you're shopping. Number six is plan days out. So this kind of goes back to number three, just checking the list, of make a fun budget. So planning days out, you can use your fun budget to plan those days out instead of shopping. And it also prevents you from accidentally walking into a shop. If you have something to get home for or to go out with a friend, you're less likely to just, oh, I'm just gonna pop into um, New Look and have a look round. Oh, I'm just gonna have a look in JD and see what trainers they have, that kind of thing. So the more you have planned in your life, the less time you have to just nip to the shops and have a browse or on a day where you have nothing to do, you might think, oh, I'll just go and have a look around the shops, just a walk around the shops. And that puts you in the danger zone of impulse shopping again. So definitely plan fun days out, plan fun weekends, make arrangements with your friends. It will stop you from shopping and it'll stop you from shopping online as well. If you have dinner plans with a friend, then you're not just sat on the sofa at home scrolling through um, Amazon looking at goodness knows what. Number seven is make an inspiration slash manifestation board if you're into manifesting. This can either be for things that you want to buy in the future. So if there's a Chanel bag that you really, really want in the future and you know that you have to save a lot of money for it and that is why you're stopping spending, make a manifestation board or a um, mood board with pictures of the bag, outfits that you have that you think will work with the bag, um, all kinds of things like that. Or if it's for a holiday or for your retirement and the things that you want to do on your retirement. So you can make your mood board for travel or um, new hobbies that you want to make with the money that you're saving by not spending now. So definitely get creative. You can just print out things. You can make it on Photoshop you can go wild with it or you can keep it minimal, but it's a really good way to have a reminder of the reasons why you are stopping yourself from shopping. And it kind of gives you that motivation as well. Number eight is delete shopping apps. Delete that Amazon shopping app, delete the ASOS shopping app. It's way too easy when you're bored to just press on there, have a scroll through and potentially buy something. So just delete them off your phone and you won't think about them as much. It's a great idea, believe me. <laughs>
Number nine is try clothes on in store. Now I know that's a bit difficult right now with everything that's going on, but once we can get back in the shops, make sure that you're using the fitting room. There is a very big chance that when you get home, you'll try your items on and one will be okay, but you probably wouldn't have bought it if you knew that it would fit this way, or you try it on and it's not quite your colour, or you try it on and you think, actually this goes with none of the clothes that I own. And a lot of the time the item will just get pushed further and further back at the wardrobe and sit there and you'll have spent the money on it and you won't be wearing it and it's just a waste. So try and try things on. And we are now down to number 10. The one thing that I would tell everyone to stop doing, don't browse Amazon. Stop just scrolling on Amazon. It is a terrible idea if you want to stop yourself from spending as much money or you want to stop shopping. Amazon is full of useful stuff you never thought you needed or you never knew you needed until that very day. And it is so easy to just click buy because they have all your details saved. So just avoid Amazon if you can, unless you have a specific item that you know will be cheapest on there and you can't find it anywhere else. Just try and avoid Amazon at all costs. We all know that Amazon workers conditions are bad. We know that the items that are on there are often made in sweatshops in China or wherever. And it's just my disdain for Amazon. <laughs> I could do a whole video about that, but staying positive, you want to save yourself money and Amazon is a trap for spending more and more money. They even have the people who bought this also bought this section. And of course you're gonna be interested in what other people buy. And maybe you might need that too. That is the whole Amazon thing. And so enough on that. <laughs> Those are the 10 ways that you can stop yourself from shopping, save a little bit of money and become more minimal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't a bit too ranty at the end. Let me know below if you thought it was and what are your thoughts on Amazon. Um, I will see you next week with another video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe below as well. It really helps my channel and I'd love you to join this journey with me on becoming minimal. You can also follow me on Instagram at The Realist Minimalist. I'd love to see you over there too. But for now, that's the end of the video and I will see you next week. Bye!